What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Jada here back with another video, back with another reality recap. Today we're going to be talking about the show Married to Medicine and I talked about this a little bit in my little recap of the current season that's still going on of The Real Housewives of Potomac that I'm still trying to watch and make it through but I in that video pretty much said how I'm just so disappointed with <laughs> these newer seasons. Like it just seems like the whole Real Housewives just franchise in general has just been going downhill. At least the ones that I've watched, which is Potomac and Atlanta, they just definitely been in terms of like entertainment factor and then like an interesting plot. But anyways, today we're gonna be talking about Married to Medicine season 10. So I'm gonna be doing a quick get ready with me and I'm thinking I'm just going to redo the same look that I did in my other video for 90 Day Fiance. That was the single life, the first two episodes. The camera quality was interesting the entire time. So now that I've kind of figured that out, <laughs> so to speak, I'm just going to be refilming that look but with a different video. Let's get into it. I think it'll be easier for me to basically go from cast member to cast member. And then if there's like certain events that obviously include all of them, then I'll talk about them like after I talk about each person. Person. So Dr. Jackie, she doesn't really have too much going on. I think she's obviously, you know, trying to pull back a little bit from being in the OBGYN office and she's trying to go more into, I guess, the advocacy route and then also trying to put out more, you know, messages with regards to women and more specifically black women and also giving birth. So pretty much she has delivered, I'm sure, a crap ton of babies. I'm sure you guys have probably seen by now the controversy that has ensued. It was her basically coming out with a video saying that black women, I think she was talking about, you know, women who, you know, are pregnant and are about to give birth. She was saying that it's hard to tell when they're being like serious about certain things. I might need to clip my hair back because this is getting kind of annoying. She was basically saying how, I guess, maybe they complain about things and you never really know when they're being serious or not or something like that. And I'm just like, that's weird to say, considering that throughout the Married to Medicine show, you kind of put on this persona like, you know, oh, I really want to be here for my black women. No one really takes them seriously. It just kind of seemed like a weird message to put out considering her platform. I think that was obviously after they had filmed these episodes, but still, it's like, girl, that's not really something you want to say considering you trying to champion black women here, okay? So with that being said, she is on the path in terms of more so like advocacy, so to speak, being more so involved in, I guess, the social part of things to try and really bring about change. I guess because of the really high death rates when it comes to black women and when it comes to them being in the hospital and giving birth that way. So let's move on to Dr. Simone. Basically, Dr. Simone is having some issues with her two sons. They're not really wanting to leave the nest. Or so for their older son when it comes to that. It seems like he's been changing his major several times and she just wants to have her house to herself and her husband, okay? And, which is their father. It's just been getting to the point where she's just like, okay, I'm just gonna get y'all an apartment. They end up getting them an apartment to share, but obviously there's rules. So someone's gonna have to either, you know, just get a job or move out. Let's move on to the more cattier members of the cast. So we have Dr. Heavenly, who obviously she's not known for holding her tongue and she likes to just talk, okay? A lot of what she says, it literally has no merit. She's just talking, just to get under your skin most of the time. And it seems like most of it is kind of either directed at Quad or Toya, but also her daughter, Aurora. She is now moving to uh, Florida. She is going to be going to school there at a and University. And I guess Dr. Heavenly was trying her best to, you know, get her to stay in Georgia or more specifically Atlanta. But she was not having it. We need to fix these eyebrows, we crazy. So she's moving to Florida. Let's move on to Toya. Toya and I forgot her husband's name. 
Jeez. Anyways, whatever. So her and her husband, they're trying to ignite or reignite the spark in their marriage because over the years, Toya has been feeling rather alone, especially during COVID because he is an ER doctor and, you know, he had to be on call for so many hours in a day. And then when he would come home, he wouldn't really show her much attention. So yeah, it just became kind of strained, but thankfully Dr. Simone had kind of stepped in because her and her husband also had some issues in the past that they were kind of on the verge of getting a divorce as well. But thankfully they snapped back and they figured out their problems to an extent, I guess. And now they're trying to help out Toya and her husband. Oh, Eugene, Eugene, I remember. So yeah, Eugene and Toya are trying to figure out their issues and also with regards to toya she has a lot of problems with mainly dr heavenly because like i said heavenly likes to talk smack and then pretend like she don't know what you're talking about you know like she never said that she also has issues with quad their relationship is strange because it started out okay and then it just became kind of like i guess maybe they were just kind of gunning for each other a little bit and then there was that whole issue i think either last season or the season before that I forgot the name of the indian woman they had on there she had gotten robbed her and her husband their their house had gotten ransacked there were some other robberies going on in that area and it was close to where toya had lived and quad had insinuated that toya was pretty much the one like she wouldn't put it past her to be the one to orchestrate something like that and i was like quad that's kind of strange also when it came to toya she had put out this <laughs> weird thing insinuating that Quad was sleeping with her then contractor because at the time she was actually getting a house built. Their relationship is strange, okay, to say the least. We're gonna move on to Miss Quad since we obviously already kind of talked about her in connection to um, Toya. So Quad, she's single, been single for a good minute now, and she is trying to, I guess, finagle her way back into the friend group because she claims that she misses them. She's been traveling a lot. She's been gone a lot. Even when she was in the other past couple of episodes, she wasn't really around the ladies that much. She had a lot of like one-on-one -on -one visits, but it was like, is she really on the show anymore? Cause she, she would just disappear. I just would understand where the ladies would come from when they'd be like, they don't even really know who Quad is anymore because she's never really there. She's never really around them like that. So they don't know what's going on with her. They don't know what issues she's having. None of that. Quad does not say anything to the ladies. So that becomes a major issue leading on into the next couple of episodes, but I'll get to that later. However, let's move on to Miss Phaedra Parks, all right? So Phaedra and Quad, they're now, you know, kind of two peas in a pod. Kind of, okay? I'm just gonna say that, kind of. You know when you be trying to remember like what the heck you did to a look? Like, <laughs> okay, so Phaedra, she used to be on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. I even talked about her in that video that I talked to you guys about earlier. I just remember Real Housewives of Atlanta being so much better when she and Nene were on the show, even though it looks as though they didn't really have the best relationship, I don't think. I never used to understand her alliances, child. But anyways, she's now on Married to Medicine. Why, I don't know, because she's not married <laughs> at all anymore. She used to be married to this guy by the name of Apollo, but he went to prison for what, I can't remember, but either way, he went to prison. Now she's, I guess, mixing and mingling with the Married to Medicine crew instead. But when it came to specifically Phaedra and her relationship with Quad, it just seemed like she was trying to have two separate relationships because it seemed as though quad didn't really feel the need to i guess reconnect with the women just yet so it just continuously felt like phaedra had to have two different relationships going on at the same time like one with the group of ladies and then one with uh, quad because quad even though she was saying that she wanted to reconnect with the other women i don't know if she really wanted to phaedra she's shaking some things up because she does <laughs> start some ish when it comes to quad okay and i think she was maybe doing it in good faith but also to be a little bit messy because it's kind of what she's known for you know let's move on to dr alicia she's 
she's new, okay? She's not really technically in the crew yet. So she's actually one of Dr. Heavenly's um, dentist friends. With that being said, it was interesting watching her interaction with the ladies outside of Dr. Heavenly because I, I can't remember who it was that asked, you know, Alicia this, but they were like, you know, do you think you would ever want to merge your dentist practice with Dr. Heavenly? And she was like, yeah, no, like I would much rather just keep my friendship separate from my business because <laughs> let's be real, honey, it never ends well when you mix <laughs> business and pleasure. I just don't see that going well. So I agree with her on that one. Just keep it separate, child, because Dr. Heavenly on top of that is a messy person and I would not want to connect my business with that friend, okay? I would prefer to just keep her as an outside the office friend. That's it. And lastly, we have Letitia. Let's make sure this blue is blended. So she is actually the fiance to Quad's ex, Gregory Lunsford, Dr. Gregory. And she is getting married to him. And leading up to it, there's just so many issues. But now that we got all the women out the way and their little updates, let's talk about them as a group okay and what's been going on this season so far so first we have Phaedra she's coming into the group she's meeting all the women getting to know everybody awesome now what I find interesting though is in terms of her relationship with quad it is pretty separate but then we get introduced to Letitia but there are some problems with regards to it's still kind of awkward because that's you know quads ex that Letitia is getting married to so the other women are trying to figure out how to navigate that in terms of letting her into the group because obviously Gregory you know he still kind of is friends with all of their husbands so obviously Letitia is going to have to be a part of the wives crew. It's a little awkward because they're kind of in the position of, well, you know, Quad used to be our friend, but we haven't really heard from her like that. So, you know, does it really matter? And I was like, I kind of feel that because Quad has been so absent <laughs> from this show. They're at, I think it was basically Letitia and Greg's engagement party or something like that. And it's really awkward because they start talking about Quad and their non-existent relationship with her. And even Letitia's sister had to come in and be like, why are we talking about this man's ex-wife when she's about to be his new wife? And this is their engagement party. I find it really weird. The timing is like, girl, what, what is this? It's not as though she has an issue with Quad. It's just that it's the timing. It's, it's kind of off. I'm just going to put my mascara on my top lashes. I'm not bothering with any like false lashes today because child, we got other things to do. Either way, it's just really just a weird situation that they're in and they're trying to figure out how to, you know, maneuver that. Now, Quad, she, you know, Phaedra, like I said, Phaedra is a little messy. So Toya had actually planned a bachelorette party for Letitia. She invites all of Letitia's friends and Phaedra just decides to take that very moment to bring Quad in because people had so many questions at Letitia's and Greg's engagement party. And Phaedra was like, okay, well, you know, let's bring her in. Quad comes in. It's just so weird. I'm like, why y'all bringing this man's ex-wife to his new wife's bachelorette party? Like, this is not the time or the place, even if people had questions about Quad's whereabouts, not the time. But like I said, Phaedra likes to be a little messy and then hide her hands just a little bit, okay? Which is kind of why I like her. But at the same time, she would be upfront about what she did. She's not gonna be like heavenly and just completely forget what she did. So I'm just gonna let that sit and I'm just gonna talk for a little while. But Quad does try to make it a little less weird by bringing Letitia a gift, but the beef between Toya and <laughs> Quad runs so deep that it's just, yeah, she was like, yeah, you gotta go. This ain't even my bachelorette party, but I planned it and you you got to dip. So Quad leaves and it's just, it continues to be very awkward. Also, there was a moment during the bachelorette party when Letitia kind of had a little bit of a breakdown of sorts because she got a call from her wedding planner about certain things costing way more than it was supposed to because they had to change some things around. She starts going ballistic and starts going off on her sister who's just trying to calm her down. So it's just really awkward because the other women, you know, they're still trying to get to know her, okay? They don't really know who Letitia is. 
is. It's just really weird that that's kind of like the first impression, you know? No, not the first impression, probably the second impression. But it's just like, they're still trying to get to know her and that's what happens, you pop off. So it just, yeah. But either way, in that moment, while they're trying to calm Letitia down, Heavenly decides to take it upon herself to basically make the comment saying, you know, she doesn't really think that they're ready. She doesn't really think that they should be getting married right now. And she does have a dinner of sorts to meet up with Letitia before this. And that's when Letitia kind of came out and said, I kind of have a lot of issues with Greg right now. We're trying to work through a lot of problems. And on top of that, he is a little controlling, a little too controlling in some areas. I kind of take that a little bit with a grain of salt because I feel like people use the word controlling to describe <laughs> so many different behaviors these days. But either way, she says he's controlling and basically Heavenly decides to take that back to the group, even though it was like, okay, well, for what? You're just trying to be messy. But I do like like the fact that Letitia is, you know, she's an open book, but at the same time, if you're in the group with these ladies, especially Heavenly, I wouldn't say too much because you probably hear that come back up in a very negative way and it's more than likely gonna come from her, okay? <laughs> Again. <laughs> Letitia's friend hears this and she does give that message to Letitia and Letitia's just like, yeah, uh, no, you're not invited to the wedding anymore. So on the day of the wedding, okay, everybody's invited and you know they decide to still go ahead with the marriage and everything's beautiful everything's gorgeous heavenly raises hell at the entrance because you know the person who is supposed to be in charge of checking off the list he just turns there and is just like yeah um you're not on here like she scratched you off you're not invited anymore so I don't know what to tell you. Heavenly and Damon, they're trying to figure out what to do, but somehow they do end up making it through a side entrance and actually still seeing the wedding. And Letitia even spots her in the audience as she's going down the aisle to Greg to get married. And it's just like, oh my God. <laughs> She's clearly very irritated with Heavenly and again, the type of person Heavenly is, it's so annoying because she likes to say things and then pretends like she does not know what you're talking about. Like she never said that. And that's the problem that I've had with Heavenly ever since she came onto the show and what I think other women have issues with her, you know, for as well. Now that Letitia and um, Dr. Greg are married, it gets more interesting from here. Mostly because of Quad, not because of her, you know, any like jealousy or weird relationship with Letitia or anything, but she's trying to, I guess, so to speak, reignite her relationship with the other ladies. She does it in the weirdest way possible and Phaedra also has a little bit of a part to play in this planning of this little event that Quad had in mind. And it doesn't really surprise me because again, their relationship <laughs> is like Phaedra just, you know, she loves to be messy and Quad gives her the opportunity to be messy. Phaedra has a funeral home. She invites the ladies over there and it's for Quad to basically say that she's now putting to rest. Like, okay, so technically it was supposed to be a funeral, okay? <laughs> so to speak, right? It's supposed to be a funeral. She invites the ladies and there's a casket rolled in and the ladies are just looking around like, what the heck is going on? Hold on, let me just put my finishing spray on real quick. Okay, they roll in this casket and <laughs> Phaedra starts talking, giving like a eulogy, I guess. And that's when they open the casket and Quad pops out of the dang casket, y'all. I was like, oh my God, this woman is so dramatic. To be honest, in the first couple of seasons that I watched of Married to Medicine back in the day, I mean, it seems so long ago, but basically Quad, I feel was probably one of my favorite characters, but over the years, she just become so again, absent. And then because of that absence, it was like, she started becoming a little bit more unavailable. And then she started detaching herself from the group and she never really gave reasons as to why. And then she came back and was like, well, you guys have hurt me and done this and done that, but she never would take accountability for anything. And this event was nothing short of just that. She does not take accountability for anything. She's just saying she's gonna be putting to rest or putting in the past what the ladies had done to her. Yeah, I find that so interesting. She just decides, oh, I'm just going to forgive you guys, but 
you know it's like girl you need forgiveness too because you weren't that great of a friend do we not remember that entire season where she was on i think it was a sister circle she was one of the hosts on there and she pretty much just abandoned her friends her other friends <laughs> she just pretended like they didn't exist she had a whole party and had this little heartfelt speech where she's talking about the women on the sister circle and how they kind of were, I guess, her support system in a way and made her have more trust in women again when it comes to friendships. And I was like, that's interesting to say, Quad, when you have your other friends that you pretty much abandoned just standing right there. Are we gonna forget that episode? So yeah, it's just really interesting that Quad has such a selective memory when it comes to things that happen to her and not things that she's done. And the women have constantly tried to tell her that it's like, it's not really just all about you all the time. You have to take into consideration what you have done. You have to take accountability for your actions actions in this friendship quad pretty much apologizes for nothing it gets even worse when they try to have a little dinner in the back <laughs> eating some fried chicken you could see phaedra even the person who even helped her plan this event was just so disappointed with quad and was like well what's the point of me trying to help you and put all this together if you're not going to actually try to take accountability for anything so now phaedra is kind of also on the outs a little bit with quad but moving forward toya actually is working on releasing a wine subscription service or something like that where they send wines to your house and i have heard about some things like that i've never tried it because jada ain't got no money right now <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest, Jay did not have the money to be buying wine. But either way, she is working on that. And I'm happy that she has something to her name now and she could kind of feel accomplished outside of, of course, being a mother. Because I feel like she's been feeling like, when it comes to the other women, that they don't really respect her. And when I say the other women, I really just mean Dr. Heavenly. She just said so much ish about Toya. She doesn't really do anything else besides be a housewife and a mom. And she just talks so much crap about her. And I'm just like, why are you talking crap about being a housewife and being a mom? Like that's a very much so heavy job when it comes to being a mom it does get crapped on you know if you want to be a stay-at-home mom specifically they just kind of look at you strange and it's just like well why aren't you working why aren't you doing this why aren't you an entrepreneur you know what i mean it's just <laughs> it's interesting especially coming from the people who claim to support women it's it's rather funny speaking of toya anyway she invites the ladies to somewhere in the u.s but basically like a wine vineyard area this is where her wines were being developed I was inviting the ladies because it was supposed to be kind of like a more so of a, a business trip on her end because she had a lot of business meetings then she was like okay well i have a lot of downtime in between so we could just have dinners you know do some activities here and there so she decides to invite quad quad comes in and then also leticia is invited as well and it's very interesting in terms of the dynamic between her and the women now after the the dinner that they had I think it was the very first dinner the very first night that they were even there they decide to call quad in after having a little bit of a back and forth at the dinner because quad still refused to take again accountability for her actions and even her actions at this weird event that her and Phaedra had planned they called her into the room and they just had a pretty kind of heartfelt chat with her and was like listen none of us feel connected to you right now Okay, and on top of that, our relationships with you, like all of us, it's just strained. A lot of things ended up coming up at that dinner. Phaedra found out that <laughs> Quad was a little bit of an op because Phaedra is pretty close with Greg and a lot of people were insinuating that she and him had been sleeping together and that she decided to just be friends because Phaedra was telling Greg that she wanted money from him, like a couple thousand a month. And Phaedra was like, what are you talking about? Like I make more on my own why would I need to ask someone for a couple of thousand dollars but quad had said a lot more about phaedra and it was some negative things that relationship has gone downhill so even phaedra along with the other ladies now are looking at quad like what's your problem what's your issue so they just decide during this conversation like listen you're you're gonna have to leave because we don't we don't feel connected to you and this relationship is not it so she ends up leaving the next morning and 
yeah, it seems like all the other ladies are pretty much getting along with each other. But yeah, just Quad leaving is very interesting and very telling. I don't know what that's going to mean moving forward because she's, again, kind of distanced her own self when it came to her relationship with the other women. So she kind of did that to herself. And then they kept trying to give her chance after chance to come back in, but she kept not apologizing, not taking accountability yet again. And it's just like, well, okay, well, what are we doing? We're just going to keep this cycle going. Quad just has this victim complex about her where she's the only one that experiences any type of pain and she never really causes any but a girl you can't go through life like that and then expect people to be there for you but I'm just gonna change real quick so you guys could see my full outfit so give me a second all right you guys so I'm back this is the final look it's not gonna be the full outfit because I'm wearing stretchy pants at the bottom okay <laughs> so that's why I love YouTube. It really just cuts off at the top. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. Anyways, that's pretty much it for Married to Medicine for right now. At least like the major key points for me. But I'm probably going to make another video in terms of the other episodes soon. So keep an eye out for that. But that's pretty much it for this one. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.